this video we will be looking at friction the definition of friction the different types of friction static and kinetic what it means how to know the difference how to know when to use which one and how to calculate it let's go first things first you need to know the definition for friction and the definition for friction is the frictional force is the force that opposes the motion and opposes the motion means acts in the opposite direction of the motion so it contrasts the motion so if someone is pulling a box to the right friction will act to the left if someone is pushing or pulling a box to the left friction will act to the right so it opposes the motion goes opposite to the motion and acts parallel to the surface it is in contact with so friction is a force exerted by a surface and it occurs when two objects are in contact on a surface. And because friction is a force, we know that the unit for friction is Newton. Now, very, very important. If I have a situation where my object is on a horizontal surface over here and the object moves to the right, so the displacement of the object is to the right, or there's an applied force causing a displacement to the right, friction will act to the left, parallel to the surface. So friction is always parallel to the surface. If I have an object being pulled up a slope, so you can see here the um, displacement of the box is up the slope, friction will act down the slope. But it's important to note that this friction is parallel to the surface. And a lot of students get confused with this. If my box is pulled upward at, at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the horizontal, so here you can see the supplied force is upward at a 30 degree angle, friction is not at an angle. Friction is always in the opposite direction of the motion and it is parallel to the surface. So friction, once again, is parallel to the surface. That's the first very important thing to know about friction. The second is that we get two types of friction that we will be working with. So we've got static friction and kinetic friction. Now, as the name suggests, static friction is when we have an object standing still. So, static friction is the frictional force when an object is standing still on a surface. There is an official definition that you need to know. It is in the exam guidelines, but this is just a very basic brief definition in order to help you understand. And the symbol for static friction is Fs. So, F like that with a little baby S. Then kinetic friction. Kinetic means movement or motion. So, kinetic friction is the frictional force when an object moves or slides over a surface. And these are the formulas that we're going to be using to calculate friction. So maximum static friction, we take the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. I will explain what this thing means. This is called the coefficient of static friction. I'll explain what that means very shortly. But for now, just know that that's the formula. And for kinetic friction, it's the same thing almost, but it's the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. Remember the normal force is Fn or N. Right. Now, there are technically three situations that you need to understand when it comes to friction. And they are as follows. Let's pretend that this is my surface. Okay, so here's my surface. And here is my object. So I've got a water bottle standing on my surface. Do you agree that if you have to draw a free body diagram for the situation, you'll have the weight of the bottle going down and the normal force of the surface acting upwards on the bottle? However, do you agree that there is no other external force applied on this bottle? In other words, I'm not pushing it. I'm not pulling it. No other forces are acting on this bottle. If this is the case, this object is standing still, but there's no applied force acting on the object this object actually experiences no friction. No friction whatsoever, not even static friction. And you might say, but ma'am, didn't you just say that static friction is when the object is standing still? I did say that, but there's a difference between when the object is standing still completely and there are no external forces touching the object, and when the object is standing still, but I have an applied force acting on the object and the object is still not moving. So look at the difference. No external force applied at all. Object is standing still. No friction. As soon as I apply a force, now take note how I am applying a force. It's a very, very small force. Is the bottle moving? No. However, I am applying a force. I'm applying a very, very, very slight force to the right. Okay, but the box, the bottle is not moving. In that situation, 
when there is an applied force acting on the object and the object doesn't move, that's when we have static friction. And then obviously kinetic friction will be when I'm applying the force and the object moves. Then there will be kinetic friction. So I hope you understand the difference. So if we take a look at this note over here, it says that if an object is standing still on a surface and there's absolutely no force acting on it, it has no friction force, no applied force, no static friction, no friction whatsoever. However, as soon as I apply a force to the object and the object does not move, there's static friction. And that static friction is equal in magnitude to the applied force. Here's the proper definition for static friction. The force that opposes the tendency of motion of a stationary object relative to the surface. So it applies, it, it opposes the tendency of motion of a stationary object. So in the scenario, absolutely no applied force. Therefore, we have no static friction. But as soon as I start to do this, I have an applied force on this bottle. But is the bottle moving? No. So therefore, the bottle has static friction. If I apply a force of one newton to the right, static friction is one newton to the left. If I increase the force, I'm pushing a little bit harder now, I'm pushing with two newton to the right, applied force of two newton to the right, bottle still not moving, so static friction is two newton to the left. I continue pushing a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, and as you know, eventually the bottle starts to move. As soon as the bottle starts to move, we no longer have static friction, we have kinetic friction. So I push it and my applied force matches my static friction force. I push it harder, I push it harder, I push it harder, I push it harder, 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 until it eventually is on that point, that tipping point of moving. That point, just, just, just as it starts moving, we say that it has a maximum static friction. And if I push harder, if I apply, a, if I have a, exert an applied force just more than that, then it'll start moving. Okay, then it has kinetic friction. And the way that I can represent that is in a graph like this. So, as you can see here at the bottom of the graph, remember I said if I have, let's say, 10 Newton of applied force, let's first read our axes. It's very important when you look at graphs to read your axes. The x axis has applied force in Newton, so that's how hard I push the applied force. And then the y axis has frictional resistance in newtons. In other words, friction. Now, in the beginning, if I apply a force of 10 newton, the object's not moving, static friction is 10 newton. I increase my applied force to 20 newton, the object is still not moving, static friction is 20 newton. So basically what's happening is this. I'm pushing to the right with 20 newton, that is my applied force or F applied. And because the object is not moving, Static friction, Fs, is also 20 newton, but in the opposite direction. Remember, positive 20 minus 20, that gives me F net of zero. That's why the box is not moving. Okay, it's stationary. We continue increasing our applied force. 30 newton applied force, 30 newton static friction. 40 newton applied force, 40 newton static friction. So we have a straight graph until it reaches this point over here. And that point over there is what we call Fs max. It's the maximum static friction. When my applied force goes beyond that point, then my object starts to move and you can see that friction drops. Kinetic friction is constant more or less. So it says here kinetic friction is about constant. We don't say about constant, we take it as constant for the same range of speed. Okay. And one thing that is interesting is that there is a drop. And that is because kinetic friction is always less than static friction. One of the reasons is because the coefficient of kinetic friction, so that is the symbol, is always smaller than the coefficient of static friction. And that's what I wrote over there. And another way to think about this that makes sense is if I'm trying to push a very, very heavy box, very, very heavy, think about the heaviest box you've ever pushed across a carpet takes a lot of effort to get it to start moving. Remember, you must increase your applied force, increase your applied force, increase your applied force, keep increasing your applied force until you reach that FS max. So you're pushing very, very, very hard, increasing, increasing, you've reached FS max, you push past that, and then the box starts to move. 
is it more difficult to get the box moving or to keep it moving? Okay, so it's more difficult if you think about it to get the box to start moving. Once it's moving, we can keep it going. It's easier. So kinetic friction is less than static friction. Okay, now as I mentioned, this is the formula to calculate maximum static friction. So it's the static friction just before an object starts to move. Remember I told you that N is the normal force. This is the coefficient of static friction. And I wrote here that it is unique to objects or surfaces. Now, what that means is that that coefficient, if I have my bottle and this book, they have their own unique coefficient of static friction. If I have my cell phone and this book, two different objects. So remember it was bottle and book, it has its own coefficient phone and book, it has its own coefficient of static friction. So every set of objects has their own coefficient of kinetic friction that is unique to those two objects. And this is how we calculate kinetic friction. And the one thing that I do want you to pay attention to with these formulae is the following relationship that I wrote out for you here. The frictional force is directly proportional to the normal force if the coefficient is constant, which it is constant, if we use the same two objects. So this little funny symbol over here, that means directly proportional. And what that means is if the normal force increases, the frictional force increases by the same proportion. So if I double normal force, frictional force would, will double. If I halve the normal force, frictional force will halve. So basically, if N goes up, friction goes up by the same proportion. If N goes down, friction goes down by the same proportion. And if that doesn't make sense to you, you can always just prove it to yourself quickly. Let's pretend my coefficients of kinetic friction is one. It's usually less than one, but it's, let's say it's one. And let's say my normal force is initially two Newton. What is one times two? Well, we get two. Now, if I keep my coefficient the same, so I'm keeping it one, and I triple my normal force. So two, how do you triple it? Times three, so that is six. Then one times six is six, so this also triples. That relationship will always be true if the coefficient is constant. That is very, very important to understand. Now, when we calculate friction, we need to consider the weight, the, the weight and therefore the normal force, because remember, to calculate kinetic friction, we need the coefficient, which depends on the surfaces, and the normal force. Normal force, we often get by using or considering the vertical forces. So I did this in the previous video, but you will recall that in this scenario over here, I only have the normal force acting up and Fg acting down. The normal force and Fg together give me zero, which means that the normal force and the weight force are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. In this situation over here where the box is on a slope, remember the normal force is 90 degrees to the surface or perpendicular to the surface like that, that's Fn. And we can also resolve weight into its components like this, that's Fg perpendicular, and this is F par or Fg parallel. And if you watched the normal force video, you will know that the normal force and Fg perpendicular, those two are equal in magnitude. Now again, why do I care about this? Because I need to use this information to help me work out the normal force. And once I have the normal force and I have the coefficients, I can work out friction. So if you missed the videos that I did where I worked out weight, the components of weight, and then we moved on to the normal force and how to work out the normal force for different situations, please, please, please check out that video. I will link it in the description box below. You need to know that in order to be able to tackle friction, but before we move on, let's do this cal uh, calculation for friction. So it says an object with mass 50 kilograms is dragged across a horizontal surface and they give you the coefficient of kinetic friction. So basically we have a situation like this, we have a surface and we have the object being dragged or pulled, let's assume to the right by a F applied across a rough, rough horizontal surface. They give me the mass, which is important. I do need that. That's M. And they give me the coefficient of kinetic friction. And they want the frictional force. Now, how I recommend starting this question is with the formula. 
Fk equals the coefficients of kinetic friction times n. Now, if you look at that, you should see the following. I want the frictional force, so that's where my question mark is going to go. I have the coefficient of kinetic friction, but in order to use this formula, I first need to work out the normal force. So this is why it is important to know how to work out the normal force, so I hope you've watched that video. And my students also often ask me, Mom, how do you know that you must use Fk and not Fs? Well, because the object is being dragged, so there is motion. And they give me the coefficient of kinetic friction, which means we need to work out kinetic friction. Okay, so how do I do this? How do I work out the normal force? Well, remember, if I draw a free body diagram to help me with the scenario, I have Fn acting straight up. I have Fg acting straight down. I have the applied force acting to the right. So I'm just going to call it F. And I have Fk or the friction acting to the left. How do we do this? What do we do? Well, we first need the normal force. Now, take a look at where the normal force is. It's over here. And because it is acting 90 degrees to the surface, so it's in this Y direction or this perpendicular direction or this up-down direction, I'm going to consider all the forces in that direction. So I hope you remember from the previous video that we go F net in the y direction must be zero. Now this often confuses learners and they say, but ma'am, why must F net in the y direction be zero? Because remember, think about the box. The box is sitting on a surface. Even though the box is being dragged in this direction, so we're dragging the box to the right, the box is not moving in this direction. Think about it, the box isn't going woo or like flying down, it's moving this way. So that means the forces in this direction, the vertical direction is zero. Now, which forces do I care about? Because I am looking for Fn, this one. I care about Fn and Fg because both of them are acting in the y direction, the up-down direction. I make it equal to zero. I'm choosing up like this as positive. And Fn is what I'm looking for. Because Fg goes down, I'm making it negative. Now, how do you calculate Fg? Remember, Fg is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration. So it's your mass, which is 50, times your gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8. That gives me zero. You take over the 50 times 9.8, and it becomes positive 50 times 9.8. And I get the normal force to be 490 Newton upwards. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, ma'am, that was super unnecessary because can't we just say that whatever weight is or whatever Fg is, Fn is the same? I hear you. I get you. In this situation, yes, because there's only two forces acting vertically. But you'll remember in the normal force video, I showed you a scenario where there was another force acting at an angle. And then it wasn't so simple. Then we had to do it like this. So I just show my students how to do it like that so that they always know how to do it. If this was a long decimal number, we don't round it off. It's not the case here, but if it were, we don't round it off. Then we say 0, 0,4, which is our coefficient, times 490. You quickly do that on your calculator. So 0, 0,4 times 490. And we get 196 Newton to the left. Or you can say in the negative direction or in the opposite direction. They didn't tell us that the box was initially moving right. So maybe saying left would feel random. But you can say in the negative direction or in the opposite direction. Now in the next video, I'm going to go over what happens when we change the angle of a slope. Things happen. The normal force changes. Therefore, the frictional force changes. They ask this all the time in the exam. So you don't want to miss this video. Check out the link in the description box below for the full playlist if you've missed any of the videos. And I can't wait to see you in more videos. Bye, everyone.